Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be painting ferns in a loose watercolor style. This is perfect for beginners and I'll take you step by step. And if you're new, hello, my name is Nisha and I teach watercolor and illustration tutorials. So grab your supplies and let's get started. I'll be using my favorite brushes. This is a round brush. I'll be using a size six and a size eight. And to start, we'll put in a center stem with a light brownish green paint and then start putting in the little leaves. This fern, I believe it's called a button fern. These leaves are roundish and shorter and they're somewhat symmetrical. One is slightly higher than the other on one side, so you can go down your stem and drop in your little leaves. I will also link a reference image in the description below. I have a Pinterest board full of fern images, so you can find one of those if you need and use that while you're painting. Also remember this is a loose style of painting, so it's very gestural and somewhat abstract. I'm keeping it very loose and light. Alright, I'm picking up a little bit more brown and putting in another stem and doing a second little sprig right next to this first one. And again with the roundish leaf shape going all the way down that stem, they get slightly bigger as you move towards the bottom. If you're interested in any of my exact paints or paper and brushes, I will put a link below to all my supplies. Okay, once your first layer is in and it's your lightest layer, we can go in with some darker details. I'm going to darken up that center stem and put in a little delicate touch of a vein on each of these tiny leaves. You'll want to make sure your leaves are a bit drier so that the little details stand out. The second sprig is a little bit still wet um, for me, so I'm going to have to go in and do another layer. While it's still wet, I'm dropping in a little bit darker color right in the centers, and that will bleed out and blend on its own. If it gets too much, you can always use a pickup technique, which is a clean, damp brush. And then I'm just picking up extra color and dabbing it on the towel next to me. This is a good way to preserve your highlights and also keep everything light and translucent. And then I'm going to go through and just darken up any other areas that I want to have more shadow and details. Okay, and then with a rinse brush, you can go in and soften any edges that you like. Okay, go through and add any final touches that you like and then we will let this dry and move on to our second fern. All 
All right, so for the second one, it's also going to be a loose watercolor style. And it is probably one of my favorite types because it's very quick and it's pretty simple. You just want to keep in mind a rough teardrop shape. So we'll start with that center stem and then off of that center stem start putting in tiny little leaves at the top and as you move down they get a little bit bigger each time. I'm using very short wiggly strokes to build out these leaves. They have a rough outer edge so it's not smooth and you can also refer to the images in the Pinterest board and keep that on hand if you want a reference. Also as you can see as you move down the shape is going to get wider and then as you move back towards the other end of the fern it will start to get narrow again. For a fern leaf like this, I like to work in sections so that I can have each side stay somewhat symmetrical. So there's a bit of a mirror image from the left and the right sides. Okay, so now I'll start narrowing the width of these little leaves and they'll get shorter and smaller as they come towards the end. Okay, now that our first light layer is in, we can go in and add some shadows and details and put in some stronger colors. So the center stem is a bit darker and then I will pull out some of that color into the rest of the leaf by using a rinsed brush and then using just clean water to dilute the rest of that color as it expands outwards. This is a wet on wet technique and if your leaf has already dried then you may want to re-wet that part with just clean water and then do your wet on wet blending technique on top of that. Also remember not to get too caught up in too many details. This is a loose style, so it's okay to just sort of keep things gestural and let some of your paint just dry with that brush mark showing. So you'll see in some areas I will blend out the color and in some areas I'll just leave the paint stroke as is. The more you paint and practice, the more you'll figure out your own style. So it's your work, you get to decide how you want it to look. I also like to work in layers. So I'll always do a light layer first and then build up my colors. It's a lot easier to add color than take it away. And then with a clean rinse brush, I'll go through and soften out some of these edges. And for my last layer, I'll go in and add a final dark area through that center and blend it out onto some of the leaves. 
Okay, we'll let that dry and move on to our final fern. All right, so for the third fern, it'll be a similar shape as the one we just did. However, instead of a single leaf stroke off that center stem, we're going to be doing some very small short strokes. And just changing up your stroke structure is going to give you a very different look. Start with that center stem again. And then I'm just indicating a few lines as a guide down that stem for where the little leaf strokes will be. Okay, so with green paint, I'm going in and adding the first part, which is these tiny little strokes. So instead of the wide wiggly stroke that we did before, this is shorter strokes and they're closer together. So you can see that just changing up your stroke structure will give you a whole different look. The overall shape is the same, it's still that rough teardrop shape. However, this time, because we're using short strokes, it's going to be a different type of fern. So you can even play around with that, do longer ones, closer ones, shorter ones, and see how your leaf shapes can really change up your whole look. As I move up on that stem, my strokes are getting shorter and smaller, and they'll just start to be little dashes and kind of blend together. But remember to keep a little bit of white space so you can get that illusion of separate little leaves. All right, so now that our first light layer is in, we can go in with some darker paint and add in our shadows and our details. So with a darker green, you can go through and add the lines and the little short leaf strokes to certain areas. I'm also rinsing my brush and then with a damp, clean brush, I'm going to soften out some of these edges. If your leaf has already dried, then you can also re-wet that area with clean water if you're looking to do more of a wet on wet technique. Or you can just go in wet on dry and add in some details that way. Painting simple elements like this is a great way to study and practice your technique. You have a lot more freedom to practice and play and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. So often I will do simple little watercolors like this, just one element, and practice my technique. And the more you do it, you build up muscle memory in your hand and it becomes a lot easier to go and create the same effects on a larger piece. I tried to keep this video as much real time as possible so that you can see the whole process from start to finish. And if you're new, then you'll know that watercolors do take some time to get used to. Have fun practicing your versions of these three different ferns, and I can't wait to see your work. If you post it on social media, remember to tag me with paper wand, that way I don't miss it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had so much fun painting. Also, check the description. I run a free watercolor challenge for beginners, and I also have a beginner-friendly watercolor class. It's a course all about botanical illustration, so check out the links below, and I'll see you there.